misinformation has been a huge problem with this when it comes to social media and even some of the you know, early facts that came out sort of changing and evolving as we learn more about this. How has misinformation played a part in our response to this and, and what would you like to clear up? Yeah, well, well first of all, there, uh, I'd like to just sort of proactively state that there's a, uh, a link that's been going around uh, on the media over the last few days, uh, supposedly attributed to a Stanford doctor that gives a lot of misinformation, including that you can protect yourself by gargling and things like that. Um, I so saw again, that one. There is, you know, a, a lot of misinformation out there. I would really, though, encourage people uh, to to keep up with, if they're interested, certainly with the CDC's website, you know, which is putting out, I think, really, really good information, and also our own Santa Clara County Health Department website is excellent. And uh, uh, Dr. Cody and her team at the Santa Clara County uh, 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 Public Health Department have done, I think, an excellent job. Uh, in terms of getting good information out there and uh, being of assistance to all the healthcare facilities uh, in the county. At this point, uh, is there any treatment or, or what would be the best steps to take somebody who you know has caught it and is at risk? Yes, so it's a great question. Uh, right now, we're actually in the process uh, nationwide of, of uh, evaluating a number of treatments. I think one of the more promising uh, the antiviral medications uh, is called uh, remdesivir. You may have heard of, heard of that, and it's actually uh, a nucleotide analog, you know, similar to the mechanism of action on drugs that we use to treat HIV infection uh, that's uh, actually produced by Gilead Sciences right here in the Bay Area. So Stanford is actually involved with a couple of clinical trials of, uh, of this drug right now. Um, there's also some really interesting basic science data, which has not yet been translated into clinical results, because again, we just haven't had time to test these drugs yet in very many patients. Uh, but the virus uses um, the uh, receptor, uh, at least as one of its receptors, called the angiotensin converting enzyme receptor. So there's even at least a theoretical rationale that um, medications that we use to typically to treat high blood pressure potentially could have a, a positive effect. And the, the third sort of approach that I've heard of is using uh, a novel interferon derivative, which is one of the body's sort of natural immune mediators to treat this infection. But again, I'd like to emphasize that right now we have no definite proven uh, effective treatments, but that's one reason why it's so important that uh, we, we get these drugs out there and we study them in, a, in a appropriate randomized controlled trials so we get a, a good sense about what works and what doesn't. And then how long could it take for a treatment to be actually used on, you know, a, a decent amount of people, the public? So I think my sense is, is that, uh, you know, particularly this nucleotide analog is fairly simple to produce. And I think once that uh, it is, has been shown with a little bit more confidence to be effective, that potentially could be fielded uh, very, very quickly. But again, it just points out the, the, the importance really of doing these trials, doing them well in a rigorous fashion and doing them rapidly.